And when you get to Medina, it might be uh, apt that I remind you of some of the things that you, that you can do while you are there. Because also, some of the things that distract people is watching the masses do what they are doing. Actually, the, the, your sole intention of visiting Medina, and this feeling is in your heart, your intention of visiting Medina is to pray in the Prophet's Masjid. Keep that in the forefront of your mind. Why are we traveling northwards 400 kilometers, 250 miles? Why? Because I have it in my mind that I'm going to pray in that masjid that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ built. Some people that make a mistake and they say, I'm going 250 kilometers to visit the Prophet, to visit the Prophet's grave. La ya akhi, this is not correct. Rather, the Messenger ﷺ forbade that you set out on a journey of worship, seeking a particular place, except three masjids. La tushaddur rihal illa ila thalathati masajid. A person should not set out on a journey seeking a particular place for worship except three masjids. Masjid i hadha wal masjid al haram wal masjid al aqsa. My masjid, al masjid al haram and al masjid al aqsa in Palestine. May Allah bring it back into the hands of the Muslims. And make it easy for us to travel there in peace and to enjoy praying in that masjid. Seeking the reward from Allah. This is a permissible act. So traveling to Medina, my brother, fulfilled the meaning of this hadith. Traveling to Medina, seeking to pray in the Prophet's masjid. Okay, now that you're in Medina, there are four other things that you can do. And none of them are, are an obligation upon you. And you should not be rebuked for not doing it. If you don't, now you should, should you rebuke somebody else if they did not do it. Pray two rakats in the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's masjid. And if you wish, go to the grave of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his two noble lofty companions Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhuma and send your salam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya Abu Bakr. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya Umar. And this is as, as simple as it is. Walking through, don't be confused and distracted by the huge masses and crowds of people reading pamphlets and booklets and papers, and sending messages, and long du'as, rather, Abdullah ibn Umar, when he returned from a journey, he would go to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, and simply send his salam, and keep moving, and saying salam to Abu Bakr, keep moving, and then to Umar ibn al-Khattab, and then move on. It shouldn't take you more than 15 or 20 seconds, beyond the five minutes you may have to wait in the crowd, to actually get to the vicinity of sending salam. Don't stand in front of the grave believing that this place is a place where my du'a will be more acceptable to Allah than any other place in the masjid. And don't stand in front of the grave as if you are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning in, as if you are humble, facing and looking at the grave. Rather, you stand simply, you give salam in a modest manner and you keep moving. And from the other actions is that a person can go and he should go to the graves of al baqir the Muslims buried in al baqir Al-Gharqad, which is um, the graveyard of the Muslims of Medina next to the Haram. And you can see it when you come out of the Prophet's Masjid on the left. There's a huge graveyard. And the Prophet ﷺ would often go there and raise his hands, asking Allah to forgive the inhabitants of those graves. And often he would also go to the vicinity of the Battle of Uhud with no other purpose than to seek forgiveness for those who died in the Battle of Uhud, amongst them his uncle Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and Mus'ab ibn Umair, and 70 of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you go there and you visit that graveyard. And this is not considered to be a travel, because you are, once you have reached Medina, then within Medina you are moving around. So you're not seeking a, a journey to Uhud. You're not seeking a journey to the Prophet's grave or to to Baqir. Also, a great act from the acts of the uh, people of Medina, the acts of the Prophet ﷺ while he was in Medina, and was something that he encouraged was to visit Masjid Quba to pray to Rakaz. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man fi baytihi, thumma ata al 
Or as the Prophet ﷺ said it, whoever does wudu in his house, in your case, in your hotel, from the place that you set off, and Allah knows best, whoever does wudu in his house, and then comes to Masjid Quba to pray in it, shall have the reward of a complete umrah. So then, this is something which is recommended, and uh, you should attempt to do it. And there's no other place you should, you should be coaxed into going to. I'm sure the brothers who are organizing your group will not take you to other places, but then there are buses that do what they call ziyarat. And they call ziyarat, ziyarat, ziyarat. They tell you that we'll go to the, um, the well of Uthman, and we'll go to the masjid in which two qiblas were prayed in, and someone told me to, to the degree that they go to this masjid and they pray in both directions. Uh, levels of ignorance which a Muslim should not be pleased with, with seeing and witnessing and going to some place where the battle of Khandak was, the battle of the trench where they, after that they, they built seven masjids. None of these places are places to, of visitation. Rather, busy yourself seeking knowledge, busy yourself praying in the Prophet's masjid, Indeed, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Salatun fi masjidi hada, khairun min alfi salatin fi ma siwahu, fi ma adahu, illa al masjid al haram." A prayer in this masjid of mine is better than one thousand prayers in any other masjid, except al masjid al haram, which we know is one hundred thousand from another hadith. So, therefore, while you're in Medina, spend your time in the Prophet's masjid, and you don't have to, and don't spend your time. You don't have to spend your time in the in the rawdha, the green area, rather, you are anywhere in the masjid, reading Qur'an, doing dhikr, increasing in nawafil. Avoiding the times where it's not permissible to pray nawafil, like for example, after asr until maghrib, and after fajr until sunrise. And uh, about 10 or 15, 15 minutes before the adhan of dhuhr, because these are the prohibited times that a person um, is not allowed to pray in.